This is the Cool Photo Tools Podcast, episode number 59, March 21st, 2016. Are you sick of trying to learn all the new photo software? Are you tired of hearing about the next big thing in photography? Well, neither are we. Welcome to Cool Photo Tools with Jay Beerstorff and Rhonda Spencer. Today's sponsor is Audible.com, who has more than 180,000 audiobooks and spoken word audio products. Get a free audiobook of your choice at www.audibletrial.com slash coolphototools. Good morning and welcome back, cool heads. Welcome to the Cool Photo Tools podcast and YouTube video. And to my left is Rhonda Spencer. Hello. Back, I'm back. again, back again. <laughs> Not yes. on vacation this week again either. No. Gosh, I'll never live down a vacation week, will I? No, because people are like, ah, if Rhonda doesn't get back, we're going to cancel our <laughs> iTunes subscription. <laughs> this is costing entirely too much. Yeah. So what's new, Jay? Well, funny you should ask that because that's kind of what this program is about. Is, that's true. Is cool photo tools. And you know, you can always uh, subscribe uh, to iTunes, mm -hmm. uh, those of you that are looking at the YouTube version and those of you that uh, are looking at the uh, version um, that's on YouTube, you can always get the audio version on iTunes.com or you can go to coolphototools.com and click on podcast and you can get the links to all of the stuff that we're talking about in these episodes. So definitely do go. that. All right. So up, up first of all today here on my list of exciting things is um, something from this is actually on the uh, the B and H Photos website. This is called the uh, the the IC one two the QB IC and then one two, and it's a micro LED strobe and video light. They come in different colors, uh, different yeah, not the lights aren't different color, but the uh, boxes are. The little boxes are different colors there. Yeah, they're a little square, um, and they uh, are designed you know to work with. Uh, you can use them for video. Uh, you can use them with your smartphone. You mean they're like a strobe flash? They they do kind of a strobe flash thing. Uh, they synchronize to your uh, your camera phone, um, and you can use them that way, or you can use them as a video light as well. And these are about eighty nine bucks. I haven't tried one of these myself. They're kind of intriguing. You can also have, their, have a tripod thread on the bottom, so you could mount them to something. Um, they don't seem to be, I don't know if there's a dimensions on here. They're not. Uh, they look like about a one by one. Well, I think they're a little bigger than that. But, uh, but you know, let's see. Um, I'm looking for the size here. Now they're one and a half by one and a half by one and a half. So they're one and a half inch cube. Hmm. Probably why they call it the QB. Hmm. Interesting. And it says up to uh, uh, 1500 lumen uh, mm -hmm. for their strobe output. But then for continuous video, it's 800 lumens. But they do have daylight color temperature with a, a 92 CRI index, dimmable, so you can you can dim them down, flicker free, so they work great with video, and then they have a, a built-in battery, so they are rechargeable. So you can check that out. Put that link to that in our show notes as well. What you got, Rhonda? Oh, I was digging through my closet and dug out my Rogue Flash Bender. Turn the, there. The Rogue Flash Bender. Yeah. I've heard of these, but I don't think I've ever actually used one. Well, as you see, what it does is, here's my flash unit. So it attaches to my flash, kind of like a flash softbox, as you would see. And it's Yeah, it does kind of look like a softbox, yeah. but, but about what, about 12 by 12 inches? Probably about 12 by 12. So it would be like a little tiny softbox. Yeah. But on the other hand, it fits on, on your... Uh, flash unit. On a flash unit that you would, it's it's not gonna. It's you have to be have one of those that the fairly large flash unit. It's got to fold over, right? You yes. Can, it's if it doesn't have that fold over. That's you know, true. That, like yeah. the, the flash unit that you can bounce to the ceiling. Right. If it's not a big one like that, this probably isn't going to be as effective because right. you've got to tilt it up. You've got to in order tilt to make it up that, uh, or tilt it forward. You know, you could tilt it forward some, but yeah, 
Tilted Up is probably your better bet. How much do those cost? Uh, what are they? Hold on a second. I will tell you. Un momento. Uh, 40 bucks. 39.95 or 49 39.95. Well, which is it? 39.95. Thirty nine ninety five. Uh -huh. Okay, well, it seems pretty reasonable. But then, you know, the trick with soft boxes or any of those type of devices that um, uh, that soften the light from any kind of a flash unit, and this this is what they don't tell you on this. But these, in order for them to, to produce a soft, diffuse light, they need to be close to the subject. Well, kind of. Go ahead, flip over to my screen and look. They are showing. Oh, do I have to flip over to your screen? Yes, flip okay, over to my what? screen. See, they are showing using one, and this is fairly close to the subject. Yeah, but see, but, well, okay. Is there a picture that after they've taken it? I don't know. Should it's we hit just, the video? It's just showing a picture of it in use. It's not showing the... Um, Let's see. Yeah, and so you see these are close in. They're they're mm -hmm. like a couple of feet, maybe not more than even three feet of that. And the farther away that you get them from your subject, they don't do anything. You might as well just take them off there and aim the bare flash unit at your subject because it becomes more of a point source of light True. as they uh, as they move away from the camera. So to make the the most use out of these, um, you need to use um, them at close range. You got to be just a couple of feet from your subject, or they just are not going to function. Now here, of course, and they're showing here a, a kind of a studio setup where they're using multiple flash units, mm -hmm. uh, one off the camera. And they also um, are showing a, a grid in one of these. It's, I'm sure that's an accessory that you can buy. It is. Uh, however, uh, I'm thinking it, I'm thinking that grid is probably not that useful. You would use a grid to make sure the light... Um, Channels where you want it to go. Well, it, goes, it doesn't bounce off of... It doesn't bounce around. It doesn't diffuse and, and aim out different directions, which in a softbox, it's not going to do that anyway. You know, are those... Let's take uh, I'm not up. so sure that that's uh, that would be useful, but certainly the other part would be, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you couldn't. Uh, but of course now we've with battery technology, we have um, things you know that you've got battery packs that you can take studio strobes with you anywhere, and uh, well, that's and the fire all the place. So you know, I, you're getting to be like the little strobes, unless you have. A space restriction. Maybe you have to fly on a plane and you have to carry this gear and take it with you. Then this would make sense. But uh, otherwise, there are there certainly are studio solutions that would appeal to me more um, than something like this. Just because you know, if you're going to try to do it, they, notice that they don't show anybody. There's no group shots with this. Well, that's right? true. You can't do. Yeah. By the time you backed it up to cover five people, right. then you're at point source again. It doesn't uh, right. doesn't have any diffusion at all. So there. There's going to be a market, you know, but I think it, it might be a little bit limited. But maybe I'm just being pessimistic You're this just morning. You're being Jay. <laughs> I'm just He's, playing the devil's advocate. He is. He always plays the devil advocate. That's all right. So did you see this on the uh, the internet here? There, was, This is a, a website. Let me switch over to it here. And uh, if I can get my Spanish pronunciation, this is uh, Quesa, Bez, Quesa Besde, I think. Quesa Besde? I... Apologize for my pronunciation, but uh, this this is in Spanish. But uh, one of the things that they did was they took a look at um, all the cameras that were producing high quality results. Or that um, I guess I should say not high quality results so much as the photographers. These were press photographers, right? And they were getting you know they took who took the who was the best press photographer and who took the most pictures or how many press photographers and you can tell this by looking at the uh, metadata in the images uh, which cameras shot which images and so they made this chart that we're looking at here and the chart shows uh, how which camera is responsible for the most images in um, uh, press photography or, or professional uh, press release photography. And so this is kind of, if you don't speak Spanish, this is a tough website to navigate. I'd be in and, trouble. And, okay, so our friends at Petapixel uh, translated it and uh, and reworked it. So you, I'll link to this in the show notes. You can check it on their website. But you can take a look at this chart and you can see which cameras uh, were the, the best news photos captured in 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, so it's a breakdown of the cameras that were used by the photographers, I'm reading this, uh, who were honored by the photojournalism's biggest prize. And by and large, a big chunk here is the Canon ES 5D Mark III. That's got the biggest piece of the pie. Uh, and then and then the next 
Next down is the Canon EOS 1D, and then the Nikon D810, Nikon D4, um, and then the 5D Mark IIs down there, and then various other cameras. And there's a, a small section they don't have any data on. They couldn't figure it out who it was. So uh, who's up in the top reds? This is the, the big one at the top is the Canon EOS 5D Mark III, Canon EOS 1D. X is the is the big is the top ones on here. And now this isn't really all that surprising, I don't think, because if you look at uh, um, who's the biggest camera manufacturer, who has the most money, who's who has the you know just the, the biggest production, it's it's Canon. So it doesn't surprise me that uh, that they showed up in the top on this, just because you know there's probably more people shooting Canon glass than, than any other company. So I don't know. It, I don't think you can really draw any conclusions from this other than that Canon is the biggest company and Nikon is the next biggest, you know I mean? It's like, Sony's got to be right up behind them. A Sony is coming <laughs> up fast and they do have a, a little space on here, but you do notice that Sony only has the RX100, this little little thing in the middle here. The really? RX100 is their little, little tiny camera. So, hmm. yeah. All right, Rhonda. That's okay, Rhonda Jay. swallowing her coffee. Go, oh, <laughs> camera's on me. <laughs> okay, Jay. Um, Okay, so talking of light stuff, I dug out my Gary Fong. Do you use a Gary Fong? No, uh, I use Tupperware. Do you? I use a Gary <laughs> Fong. So, so what are we talking? What, what is what is Gary Fong? It it's is a, who. a diffusion system. Gary, for Gary your Fong flash. is a guy that that yeah, market you know, sees. Exactly. I thought you know, interesting to have. Uh, product that everybody knows just by your first name. I was thinking about that today, you know. Gary, so, Gary Fong, you're that plastic diffuser guy. Exactly, and that's what everyone would think. But he also so, has tutorials and educational videos on photography, and he actually takes pictures too. So you he know, does. But, but he's probably you're right. He's best known best known for, for these his, uh, his flash his light sphere universal inverted dome cloud yep. diffusions. Yep. What does he have enough adjectives on there? I don't know. <laughs> so what these so, things are. So if you if you know if you're if this is new to you, uh, these are essentially a, uh, a plastic Tupperware, Tupperware, or plastic uh, <laughs> bowl. Um, here, I'll, that, I'll, let me flip that back to you so okay. you can show it here. Um, that fits on top of your flash. It's on the front of a, and this would be you know one of those flash units that's the serious kind that has that, yeah. that, that that a bounce flash unit that you would sit on the shoe of a DSLR type camera or a mirrorless camera. And it does look like a Tupperware bowl. It does look yeah. like a Tupperware with, bowl. With the bottom cut out, and then it's, it's, it attaches right to the, uh, the, flash, the unit. flash unit or the, the flash tube. Mm -hmm. So the idea behind these uh, and is that they simulate something that we used to do back in the old days. Uh, we used to do something called bare bulb flash. And this is, this is referring to flash bulbs. Before there were electronic flash, we had one single-use flash bulbs. You'd buy a carton of these, you know, 12 or 24 for a few bucks, and then you would put them uh, into the flash unit with a, uh, the, and there's a little battery in there. And then when you took the picture, then the battery would cause the, the uh, flash bulb to uh, to make a big bright flash when they were they were pretty bright actually mm -hmm. and they had they, were bright. they had a long duration and there would be a little spot in front of your eye if you were getting your picture taken looking at You'd it see yeah. the spot for minutes afterwards <laughs> yeah and of course they were hot so you had to be you know, these things really you, if you popped them out of the reflector into your hand right away you had to get rid of them in a hurry because they were very hot and they could burn you and you didn't want to throw them into a trash bin full no. of paper either they could start a fire uh, so a lot of reasons that you know they weren't a great idea but they had there was times where you could take the the bulb itself and you could spin the reflector down it was like a um, kind of like a, a a fan a chinese fan uh where you a collapsible fan you could take the reflector and and collapse it, and then you would just have the bare bulb sticking out by itself. And you could even some tilt these up where the bare bulb was was fit, sitting in an upward position towards the ceiling. So that would cause the light to bounce everywhere. It'd hit the ceiling, it'd hit the wall behind you, it'd hit the subject directly, it'd hit the walls to the sides. And you could often get a very diffuse or soft light from this bare bulb effect. Uh, if it, but, you know, you had to be in a room that had lighter white walls and a relatively low ceiling, you know, like eight feet or, or lower. If you were in a room that had a 20-foot ceiling, eh, it wasn't probably going to make much difference. So when they came out with the electronic flash units like, uh, like we all have today, they are set up where they fire 
straight ahead. They don't bounce any up. They don't bounce any to the sides. You can tilt them where they'll bounce the whole thing up or to the side, but everything it's pretty directional. So enter the... Uh, and there's been other companies that make these. Gary wasn't yes. the only guy that came up with these. He's just uh, the best known for them. Yeah, he's he's got a, a big variety of these. There are a lot of different kinds. Mm -hmm. So by putting this on the front of your flash unit, now your flash unit uh, hits this translucent plastic. Uh, some of it goes forward toward the subject, but some of it also bounces to the walls, to the ceiling, uh, the walls to the side. So it gives you the bare bulb flash effect mm -hmm. in, in a nutshell, uh, essentially. Um, that's That's what it does. It just gives you that bare bulb flash. So, I'm surprised you don't own one. Well, I have. I've got a Stofen diffuser. I have okay. a Stofen diffuser okay. too, which are this little plastic uh, thing that goes on the front, which is a similar design. It is, and in fact, you know, built into most flash units is a little white bounce card that comes out. So yeah. when you tilt the, uh, we'll the flash head back, you pull this little card out, and so the idea behind that is that it throws. Flip it over at me. Um, Yes, I'll, there you I'll go. <laughs> put it to your direction. It it throws a little bit of that light forward. So this show them how this would sit on the camera, Rhonda. So, so, so you right. sit this on the camera, and then you would tilt the flash back so it aims at the ceiling, and then you pull this little white piece of plastic out from the rear of the flash diffuser, and a little bit of that light then so. goes forward. Because otherwise what happens if you just uh, fire the light directly at the ceiling without that card coming out, it tends to uh, make... Uh, shadows in the eye socket, which sometimes is called raccoon eyes. It is very it, attractive. Yeah, it's not a good look because the light is too directional from overhead. And this throws light back into the face a little bit so that you avoid the raccoon eyes effect. Okay, so now do you still need the Gary Fong I diffuser like system? I like my Gary Fong diffuser system. It makes lighting on people look so much better. Uh, assuming you're indoors. Assuming you're yeah. indoors, yes. And I do see people try to use these outdoors sometimes. Which means you're not using any flash at all. It, well, yeah, it it may still work. I mean, your flash might be powerful enough to still uh, fill in some shadows outdoors. But of course, the the big problem is is that it just wears your batteries down. It yeah. you know it tries to make a full power flash every time, and uh, if there's nothing, you're not going to bounce that off the sky. No, you're not. That is not going to happen, folks. So don't don't let me see you use these outdoors. But it it does all a much nicer, softer photo of a person indoors. Okay, so the Gary Fong diffusers now, and they're not cheap. Surprising well, enough, Tupperware at forty nine ninety five. Forty nine ninety, and that's for this model. That's that, for that this you're model. Showing here. Now they Correct. do make some different ones. They do make different ones. They do different colors. Also, he does. Um, but if you're so, shooting raw, yes, you know you, yes, can, you can change color your color balance, balance. whatever you want. Um, but you know if you're if you're trying to match a specific color, let's say you're shooting at the golden hour, so then you probably would want one that had more of an orange or a golden color to match what the uh, the atmosphere or the sun is doing. And he makes different ones too. Here's there's the collapsible mount. This is his newest. You're going to pay an extra $10 for it, but it'll fit in your camera bag a little better. Yeah, so if you're traveling. You're traveling, be, yes. Might be useful. Okay, come on, quit it, quit it. Well, you have to hey, quit. yeah. <laughs> And for there the next, next episode, hey. we're going to teach Rhonda how to use her computer. <laughs> oh, there, you got to fix there. Yeah, you, if you select a graphic like that, it turns blue. Right? Yeah. So that one's collapsible. Takes up much less space. I haven't ever used one of these. And you can find these at GaryFong.com. And uh -huh. we're looking at the BH Photo website. But you can get them all kinds of different different places. They can be, they can be had everywhere. Yes. Yes. Collapsible for storage. All right. Well, I had. What did you have? To show you, um, have you have you ever, have you are familiar with L wire or electroluminescent wire? Mm, I don't think not so. so. Much. No, not, not probably not. It's not one of those things that I see all the time. This this is below your radar. Mm -hmm. This is not a new product either. In fact, when we first came out, we would put these in computer cases because it was kind of cool. And what uh, electroluminescent wire is. It's wire yeah. that um, has uh, a, a plastic insulator on it that has a coating that uh, glows when a current is applied to it. And so then they're usually inside of another, because um, it's kind of fragile, so they put them inside of a, a plastic, another outside plastic coating. And essentially, it's, like, it's kind of like a plastic wire, kind of a thick plastic wire, but it has a little electronic controller box on it. And I've got some here on the table if I can reach it. And it's it. used for what? 
it's uh, used for special effects. You can uh, you can buy this stuff in different lengths, and you can. Um, I've got some here. I can if you're taking a look on the screen here. Uh, there's some yellow ones. Uh, this one I broke, so it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> uh, but then I have this one. Um, so we're taking them. They're not very sturdy. <laughs> well. This, this one's pretty old, they're, but they're also not very expensive either. So, so are you saying that you use them like for night photography or? Yeah, so I don't know if you can see this in the. Special effects stuff. Yeah, this one's not working either. <laughs> <laughs> Worked for a second. Maybe it's the batteries. We're prepared here. No, we're not. Well, Technical okay. difficulties. Oh, here it goes. See it, see it flashing? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so all screen. right, I'm so gonna play little, the devil's advocate. So, what are we using this for? Well, right. it's just kind of cool. It's it's different color. It looks kind of like neon, you know, especially in in the dark. Okay. This isn't. You can't use this in the daytime because it's not really bright enough to uh, to show up. But you could use this um, again for what? Okay, for special effects. Uh, and well, let me just show you the price here. Uh, oh, see, I did that, and I'm not even on the right screen. <laughs> You're supposed to be helping me, Rhonda. Sorry, I was watching okay. you play with that little gizmo. I know. She was just riveted here, and I've got I the am. wrong camera on. Okay, so here it is. This is the thing that we're talking about, and you can see it's these are wires. These are I have what I'm holding up here. It's just a little uh, about a five inch length of a bunch of different colors, kind of like this is a color sampler, and shows you how they've got orange and yellow and turquoise and purple and white and all these different colors. And this is uh, it's powered by two AA batteries, and it's flashing on and off. There's some you can you can set it where it's continuous or flashing or, or depending on your controller. The controller is just a little uh, black box that holds the two AA batteries with a uh, button on it. And so um, these uh, you can get these on on Amazon.com. And if you look right here on this page, you can see this the ones that there's different companies that make these or, or distribute these. And the one that we're looking at here is um, by uh, uh, Z Trades, and you can get a set of uh, uh, Orange and red and blue, green and white, for uh, twenty three ninety nine, and they're nine foot long on these, and so they have, you know, for, so for twenty four bucks, you've got a whole, you've got a okay. bunch of these things. That is not nine foot long. Well, the one I have isn't. No, but these are. <laughs> but on the. Uh, that's why I'm trying to figure out what do you do with that baby? What did you well, do with that? I'm glad you're asking that because if you know, if Show you tuned into the podcast, if you tune into the podcast, you uh -huh. would, you would you'll know. Okay. And see. There's a, if you, do you subscribe to Digital Camera? Yes, I do. Okay, so if you go to digitalcamera.digitalcamerworld.com, uh, okay. digitalcamerworld.com, this is one of the, the UK's magazines. This is the... Uh, it's a very good magazine. I a, suggest it highly. Yeah, it's a, so, and on their website, they have a, uh, a section about creative portrait ideas, mm -hmm. how to use the EL wire for color flame effects. And if you take a look at uh, this particular article, I'll link to this in the show notes. But if you're looking at the video version, you can see uh, with some time exposures, they've got some really interesting, they call it a sci-fi type portrait. But you use time exposures, you put your camera on a tripod, and then uh, you can combine it with a uh, flash, or you can move this wire around. And it uh, it looks like neon, but it's it's thinner, smaller, and of course is is much less less expensive. And you can get it in some different widths and and whatnot as well. So that's an electroluminescent wire or EL wire, or L wire. Uh, pretty cool for some special effects. You know, I've seen people do stuff with this too, like uh, for Halloween and whatnot. Uh, you could say that you could like make a Freddy costume. Kruger. Yeah, this one does. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you could make a, a Halloween costume on it where you've got these, um, uh, it looks like neon, you know, neon tubing attached to you. Of course, it's much safer and cheaper than real neon. And it's flexible. Or you can put it on your bicycle. You know, Burning Man, they always use this to decorate stuff. Uh, so huh. so there you go. Now, does that answer your question? Yeah. Well, I think it, we should plug the magazine more. <laughs> yeah, and these magazines are kind of hard to get over here. You can, but they're difficult. So that's digitalcameraworld.com. And, you know, it seems like the, the American magazines on photography, well, magazines are in trouble in general because of the internet. You know, I mean, you can go to the internet, you can see movies, you can get information. And before we couldn't, back in the old days, there was no internet. If you wanted to know specialized stuff, if you're a photographer, you want to know about photography. You... I still think they handle it better than any magazine that we produce in the U.S. Because all of our magazines tend to be ads. 
Well, now, and, well, in all fairness, now, if you look at their magazine, there's a lot of ads there in is, there, too. There is, but there's a lot of educational <laughs> material in it. There's more educational material than there is ads. Most of our magazines are more ads than educational material. So do you think it's because people are, are reading? They're, they're more enthusiastic in, uh, in Europe? They're... they're in the Great Britain, the Digital Camera World magazine is more popular. I wonder what their circulation is compared to something like Popular Photography. Anybody, anybody know? Let us know. Yeah. Drop us an email. Uh, let us know how, if you know that particular stat. They do. They're they're the magazines are big, uh, thick, glossy, and they uh, often are just really. They're always excellent to, uh, always to look excellent. at and read through. Highly recommend them. Hard to find in the U.S., but you can if you if you work at it. Yeah, I ordered mine online. So do you get a subscription? Do they? I do. They come weekly. I mean monthly. It comes monthly. I mean monthly. I didn't yeah, mean. Monthly. I didn't mean weekly. Like and our podcast is weekly. <laughs> they always send all sorts of little extra stuff with it, and it is. It's very cool. And this was one of their their magazines that they were they were giving away for free. All right. So here's one other thing that uh, that is for our. Uh, this is this. Sometimes cameras are just just so weird looking. They just get my attention, and, and this is one of the hosts. You know, and, and I like I'm good. I'm cool with this. And this is an action cam. You know, we've seen like you know the GoPros are action cams, and so they have all of this uh, uh, action cam stuff. You know, you can sporting events, and uh, you can strap them to your helmet and jump around with them and whatnot. But one of the things that the action cams don't do very well is they don't do stabilization. So. Just now, are we starting to see cameras that are that have what they call a gimbal mount, and that will actually um, smooth out the the bumping and and jumping and running around here. And this is on this is on Amazon.com's website, but this is a company called Unique, and that's spelled Y U N E E C. This is the Typhoon Action Cam 4K video camera, and again, this is new. I haven't seen one of these yet. Uh, up close and personal, but it's pretty interesting looking. Just look at the style on this camera. Those of you that are on our it's, audio version, just put your eye right up to looking. the speaker. It is weird looking. It almost looks like a it looks like a Star Trek weapon. So it does to speak. kind of look like a Star Trek <laughs> weapon. <laughs> it's got a pistol grip on it, and it's got a big just aim it at everybody. It. And then it has one of the little uh, ball type cameras on a gimbal mount hanging on the front, and so that that gimbal can spin around. And uh, and stabilize as you walk or you run or move with this camera. This is this is a camera that is designed to be held, handheld, so it's not going to be strapped to your helmet or whatnot. You're going to handhold this camera, and then it's got a place on the top to hook your smartphone. And this is similar to like the uh, DJI Osmo or a lot of these motion cameras where you're sending the the image through your smartphone so in order to view it, to see what's going on, you use your smartphone. And you can even maybe use some controls on the smartphone with this as well. So I think it's similar uh, to the DJI Osmo uh, in that it's a, it's an action cam with, with extreme uh, gimbal stabilization. And gimbal makes this little camera move and spin to counteract any motion that you're making holding the camera so you don't need a tripod or whatnot. And 4K, 4K resolution. So that's that's nice. That's that's one of those we're rapidly approaching 4K standards uh, as far as uh, a higher resolution video. That there's a few of the new TV sets can play that. Uh, there's no really support for it whatsoever, other than just in theory. I mean, there might be a couple of two or three movies maybe you could get from Netflix that are in 4K. But by far and large, it's it's not used yet. It's too it's coming. soon. It's too soon. It's coming. Yeah. It's coming. Yeah, and, and well, we think it's coming, you know, and, and of course, we've been lied be to before. Bummer? Wouldn't it be a bummer with all the things that they've done with 4K of all of a sudden, it's like it never really panned out? <laughs> you mean like Blu-ray audio? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like yeah. all of a sudden, it's like, well, it just, it didn't work. Yeah, well, we, we high resolution, high resolution audio. <laughs> Never mind that the CD specification is uh, fulfills all that we can measure in human hearing. Now we have definition that's way beyond that. You, yeah, you can, you know, this is music for your dogs that have extended hearing range because, <laughs> as a human or as a fifty or sixty year old man, you're not going to hear any of that. Right. You know, your ears are shot. Did you listen to rock and roll? Did you own an iPod? Well, if you did, probably your hearing isn't as good as it might have been otherwise. So, 
But don't get me started. Don't get him started. Yeah, trust me. Speaking of getting me started, it's no. time to stop. Wow. Yeah. Again. Again, we wow. just have, we have just, we've been talking and we can't <laughs> shut up. You poor people out there. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's right. Just, you know, push, push the space bar to stop the video yes. and then step away from the computer. <laughs> get your camera, go outdoors. Yeah. You're Especially right. weather's good now. Everybody go outdoors with your camera. That's right. We're, we're experiencing um, toasty weather yeah. here, in, here in Arizona. Uh, about time for the snowbirds to, to complain about how hot it is here. And, and leave. And they, leave. they do. <laughs> they do. <laughs> they go back and they're like, ah, got to go back to Mississippi, got to go back to Canada. Uh, the weather there is, is, you know, is, is warmed up enough where it's tolerable. Yeah. And then, and then we hear, you know, where they, they, they call up and they go, we went home too soon. We went home too soon. And There's still, still snow. It's awful here. We're, we're coming right back. <laughs> yeah. So good on No, they look at the weather here and then it's like 110. They don't come back. Well, yeah, there's, you know, that, that's, that can be oppressive. You yeah. Know, you have to watch yeah, out. Yeah, you think <laughs> oppressive. <laughs> you have to drink water, stay cool. Mm-hmm. You know, so we go out real early in the morning and then not until the sun goes back down. So we stay under the air conditioner most of the day. That's right. All right, everybody, have a wonderful week, and we will talk to you next Monday. We'll see you soon. Bye. You've been listening to the Cool Photo Tools podcast. Sign up for our mailing list at coolphototools.com. Got a question? Send an email or MP3 audio file to info at coolphototools.com. Thanks for listening.